Let's go! Our guests never get on. Trying to tell me something. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon's incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It makes sense. Right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck. Indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Woman's name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. White's obsessed. Real collector. Thoroughbred. Spoon key. Sophisticated crafting. Tag bears a description. White's a true collector.
Wipe your boots before you take another step. Don't slurp your food. Don't eat with your hands. Don't pick your teeth with your knife. What? Oh, I'm just jesting. You, sir, clearly were not born in a barn. Welcome to the pheasantry. The best auberge in all the duchy. Mm, what are you serving up today? Spoon like this. When you set a place, where's it go? My, oh my. It seems rather a fanciful bouillon spoon. Or a key of some sort. There's a note here. Yeah, note led me here. Any idea what the key might open? Never seen it before. But you might search the cellars. The previous owner left all sorts of knickknacks there. See you later. Did you care, sir? Our sweet shining sun. My eyes were not deceived, yet so far south. You, sir, of all folk in all your fame. Mm-hmm. Me, south in all my fame. Ah, oh, I've heard so much. Why, when Master Dandelion tarried in Beauclair, not a day passed without him baying out a ballad in admiration of your deeds. <laughs> yeah, unwelcome little habit of his. But, what can I do for you? Ah, you see my betrothed, Francois Le Goff, vowed in my honor to bring me the head of the horrid beast they call Gretori. Hmm. Couldn't have gotten you a bouquet, some sweets in a bag? Witcher, sir, you jest. A love most true demands proof through heroic deeds dedicated to the heart's captor. But alas... Francois has been gone a fortnight. Thus, I must plead with you to see what's become of him. Could you? Would you? This Gratore. Know anything else about it, mademoiselle? Judging by the name, guessing it lives in a cave. Yes. 
from which it prowls when hungry. By night, when all are asleep, it creeps into villages. Then, of a sudden, breaks open shutters, reaches inside and snatches babes from their cradles so quickly they've not the time to yelp. Hmm. Nocturnal, long prehensile arms, intelligent. Francois claimed he would cut the filth down in a snap, but he's been gone so long. Will you help, sir? I cannot sleep. I fear this worrying will be the death of me. Rarely my want to turn down a damsel in distress, even less so when there's a <clears throat> prize involved. Ah, naturally. Why, you, sir, are no knight errant, but a guildsman, an expert. How much would you need? Master, forgive me, but you ask much too much. Yes, that amount I am prepared to pay. Do my damnedest to get your fiancé back safe and sound. Just, uh, mind telling you where to look for him? I forget you come from afar and do not know our land. They say Grotori has its lair in the caves at the foot of the Gorgon Hills. That close to the city? Telling me no bold souls have ventured out to defeat the beast? Quite the contrary. Plenty have, but none's returned. My concern is well founded. I see. All right. High time I set off. Wine by the bell. A beast lurks in there. Right. Expected as much, cause I... Shh! Quiet! Before you wake it. Come, I've camped nearby. We shall talk there. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak! Name's Geralt. No crest, no motto, no plumed helmet even. I'm a witcher. Francois Le Goff, I presume. Your betrothed sent me. See, you've been gone a while, so you've got her worried. I... well, indeed, for... for... Grotore is a most fearsome beast. I must prepare properly for battle. Takes two weeks, that? I have tarried a bit, true, but the delay is done. My word I gave, thus the beast shall die. Wouldn't happen to need any help, would you? I... I don't know. After all, I did swear a solemn oath to... 
Deposit the beast's head at your beloved's feet. No mention of you killing it all by yourself, though. All in all, I, I suppose you're right. We must fight side by side, then. For honor! To be the one to knock off its head. We gotta kill it first. Hmm, strange. No sign of Kratori. Perhaps we should turn back? If there's no beast, there's no beast. Damn shame, but we tried. Not so fast. Let's take a look around. Impressive. You'd think you were in a winter garden. Small skull. Fontanelle's not completely closed. An infant. About a year, maybe. Various sundries, some tools. Grittori must have taken them from its victims. Cradle filled with children's shoes. Doubt I've ever seen a collection this grotesque.
<laughs> By my troth, the damned brute was sturdy. I... I'm grateful, Witcher. You aided me greatly. Why the challenge? Couldn't have gone after something less formidable? A werebub, for instance? Uh, why? For... For the beast must match in ferocity the very ardor of my affection, and... You're blushing, Sir Knight. Oh, it's my betrothed. The thing is, she champs at the bit to get married when we've not known one another but two years. So I vowed to slay Gratori. Thought it would buy me time to battle such a beast why it could take months. Mm -hmm. Especially at the rate you were going. High time you returned to Beauclair, brave knight. Nay, oh, nay. The head of this beast is a trifle, wholly inadequate to express the love I harbor for my betrothed. The world awaits. Uh, to honor her, I shall cut down another, more terrible beast. Take my advice. Grab the damned head and cut the shit. You're blind to my predicament. Once I return, I will have no recourse. She'll track me to the nearest shrine, one. Shut up and listen. Crests, scrap metal armor, swooning damsels. All that's nothing to do with hunting monsters. Witches work. Damn hard, dangerous, and thankless work that you're just not cut out for. Want to prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. You do not mince words, master. In Tucson, one might demand satisfaction upon trampled ground for a lesser slight. Yet, there is truth in what you say, I cannot deny. I survived with my life by a hair. It is time I might have returned home. In fact, I don't know if you reach your place in Texas at all. Around here, it's fine. <laughs> Anyone ever won a battle with words? Cut. 
Greetings, brave hero. I am Raphael de Sorman, and I am the Ducal Camarlengo. I'm Geralt. So what is it you do here? I pay the knight's errand. For what? Our knights want of the roads protecting Tusa from bandits and monsters. It is fitting and just that they be recompensed appropriately for these toils. Uh, note, sir, that should you successfully smash your hands, save a brother knight from peril, or extract a captured merchant from the hands of cutthroats, come see me. You shall be rewarded. Can't help but be curious, but where do the funds for those payments come from? The Ducal Treasury, of course. Her illustrious highness, Anna Henrietta, assigns great value to bravery and selfless patriotism. It is her standing order that any knight may receive a wage. <coughs> Pardon me. Financial compensation for his dedication to defending the Duchy's eternal security and order. Wouldn't mind a glance at your books. Ones you're willing to sell, that is. See you later. Go in peace for a night. Kill a brave man is an ignoble deed. One hundred foot. I don't know where Sars be sold. What happened to your head? A serious client at last. Tell me, what do you need? Honeysuckle, Ganesha petals? How's business? Uh, the coin is good, but just between us, I'm going batty with Baldwin. I know what my customers want before they open their mouths. Baldwin, birch sap. Ladies of all walks, Whatever fragrance Duchess Anorietta prefers at the time. If just once somebody would order some poison, eh? Show me what you've got in stock.
Here it's wine, wine, and more wine. But me, I prefer wine. Got good news, madam. As do I. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> Prenuptial teachings at the temple tomorrow. Dress fitting the next morn, then a tour of the wedding venue. I have never been so happy. Hmm. Not sure these nuptials are a great idea. What? I beg your pardon? Young Master Legoff. Well, he wasn't exactly raring to get hitched. Seems to me you two should re. Well, I never. The nerve! Not another word. Take your coin and leave us be. Ah! One false move and you will.
brings peace to our domains. Flout its writ and rot in chains. Uh, eh? What's that? Mind showing me your wares? So long. Unbeatable barking. Prefer Financing from the Chanfanelli's on every armor purchase. The guard brings peace to our domains. Flout its rich and brought in chains. The Duchess needs for that rich to say work permanently. So nice to see you again. What do you need? Show me what you're selling. Should be going. Farewell. Work from dawn to dusk, then give my wife a cold light. Oh, oh. Seem like a white's lair. Bit atypical, but still. Call.
Aldrin should be somewhere around here. Spoon, pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Aldrin I was looking for. Why it's not particularly tidy. Table set. My who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here, definitely afflicted by a curse. And it's been trying desperately to lift it. Another spoon. Yep, just as little as the last one. gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now, your willing guest.
get this right, words of the curse were, None shall sit and dine with you at your table, no spoon you have shall say to you, Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. I'm deeply pleased, finally, to make your acquaintance, sir. Though I do regret the specific circumstances. In all the commotion, I fear I neglected to introduce myself. I'm Barnabas Basil Folti, and by order of the Duchess, I am to serve as your major domo at Corfo Bianco. Nice to meet you, Barnabas Basil. Love to talk more, but got urgent matters to attend to. While I'm gone, please make sure she gets everything she needs. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. 
He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons, and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Vineyard comes across as a place with a rich history. Know who owned it before me? Baron Rossell, who went bankrupt, forcing him to sell the estate to the Duchess. The Baron, in turn, had purchased it from Monsieur Bolius of the Headsman, a truly colorful man of Ketweni origin. He was actually a Headsman? No, not him, but his great, 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 great grandfather. Indeed. Apparently, he was a common cut purse who somehow secured for himself the post of ducal headsman in Beauclair. Went about his work with an exceptional penchant. They say he chopped off more heads than there are grapevines in the ducal vineyards. He never hesitated, not once. Never sliced unevenly, never botched a job. For his exemplary service, the duke granted him a title and this estate. Monsieur Bolius, on the other hand, was an engineer in his younger years. Once retired, he settled here and took to producing wine. Sadly, misfortune struck and he lost his sense first of smell, then of taste. Additionally, he could not drink alcohol. His medic forbade it. Shame that. He gave up making wine? Not at all. He made even more of it began throwing wild balls to which he'd invite friends from far and wide in order to treat them to his wine and delight in the fact that at least someone could enjoy it. It's the sort of man he was, Monsieur Bolius. Mind giving me a little tour de Corvo Bianco? Not in the least. Follow me, please. I think it would be practical to begin on the hill. Behold, sir, your estate in all its splendor. Pretty vast. Indeed. And now, sir, allow me to show you a handful of interesting details. Follow me, please. Been a major domo all your life? Yes, I come from a long line of major domos. My father was a major domo, as was my grandfather before him, as was my great aunt. In fact, she was the one to start the tradition. Great aunt? A hard woman. It is said that already as a child, she knew where she was going and went there. When she arrived in Beauclair, she signed on as a chambermaid at one of the vineyards, then slowly worked her way up to Major Domo. She dragged the rest of the family up the same path. The servants' quarters. I occupy the green home. With the Duchess's permission, I have hired a full staff. Their salaries to be paid from the Ducal Treasury. Nice of her. Not the most sightly part of the estate, I admit. 
but I think it's worthwhile for you as master of the domain to know where the help stays. Baron Rossell ordered the vines in this part of the estate uprooted and olive groves planted in their place. They look beautiful, especially come spring. Don't look at all bad now, either. Down below lies your vineyard, where we grow a strain of Carfanere, one of the world's oldest, aged in oak barrels. It provides for an exquisite wine with distinct blackberry, wild cherry, plum, and cinnamon notes. Marvelous. Have to try it one of these days. Nice well. Picturesque. Yes, though it ran dry long ago. During the raucous feasts Master Bolius held, he would order it filled with wine. There's a tale about a guest attending a Bolius ball for the first time and thus unaware of the custom. He had suffered great heartburn and had decided to end his life by jumping into the well. The festivities were coming to a close and the well was nearly empty when the suicidal guest finally jumped. Instead of killing himself, he nearly broke his legs. To numb the pain, he drank the wine. Drank himself to death? N not at all. When found the next day, he had concluded he'd witnessed twin miracles. The water had been changed into wine, and he had survived. He retired to a monastery in the Dragon Mountains, and began preaching the wisdoms of his world. Monsieur Bolius, his wife Nina, kept a garden here. <gasps> a supremely lovely place it was. Bit neglected now. I agree. Yet nothing stands in the way of restoring it to its former glory and once again planting it with herbs and other vegetation. Madame Nina planted diminutive, delicate flowers and herbs here. One might say their aroma still hangs in the air. You're quite the romantic part, Miss Basil. This served as an additional wine cellar in years of plentiful harvests. Hmm. Bit of work and it'll make a fine stable for Roach. The cellars, voila! During Monsieur Bolis's time, wine was kept here, but Baron Rossel used it to store olive oil as well. I took the liberty of cleaning up the um, mess, which I made while fighting the Bruxa. Thanks, Barnabas Basil. Appreciate it.
As you can see, the facade is, how to put it, slightly stained. But one cannot deny it, a certain subtle southern charm. True, though it could use a bit of subtle paint. And welcome inside. On the left is the master bedroom. On the right, the dining hall and kitchen. Upstairs, you shall find the guest room, currently used for storage. Not a bad idea. At the moment, the house is only minimally furnished. Yet I believe we will, together, devise some innovative arrangements. A few paintings, for instance, would breathe new life into the abode immediately. With that, sir, you've seen the full lay of the land. Corfo Bianco is a beautiful estate. Though one must admit, time has taken its toll. If... Forgive me for being forward, but if you were to choose to invest a small sum towards its beautification, consider me at your service on the matter. Think I'll take you up on that. Be sure to come and see you if I decide to do any remodeling. Mentioned the place could stand to be spruced up. Almost decidedly, sir. The question is where you would like to begin this rejuvenation. Been thinking about the outer walls. Maybe a fresh coat of paint, or some patching. If I might dare to make a suggestion, why not start with a general renovation? I once oversaw such work at Admiral Rompelli's summer residence. The effects were simply breathtaking. Not only did the residence positively sparkle afterwards, but we also made room to display the Admiral's armor and weapons, of which he was a passionate collector. It's in your hands, then. Make the place shine. I shall get to work immediately. Within a day's passing, I shall have sent for the crew which rebuffed the Admiral's residence. They are the finest specialists around. Highly skilled at what they do, it shall not take them too long, I wager. Two days after they begin, your eyes will behold your residence in its refurbished, rejuvenated, beautified state. Is there anything, anything else you require, sir? Got these spacious grounds. Hmm, but maybe it's time to make them more, uh, useful. Oh, yes! We certainly should! The way I see things, given your trade, sir, you would be wise to put in a grindstone and an armorous table. A good way to start things off, don't you think? In my trade, my blades get dull pretty quick. Could use a grindstone, professional grade. Of course. No one would consider that an unnecessary extravagance, I would wager. Then send out for one, please. A high-quality stone to be set up in the yard. Of course. I shall send a runner to town at once. I believe you shall be grinding to your heart's content by tomorrow. Will you be needing anything else, sir? My armor needs work from time to time. You know, oil this, reinforce that. Could use a decent work table where I could do all that. Admiral Rompali once hired a specialist who made the finest armorer's tables this side of the Yeruga. I will contact him at once. Good. Order me up a table like that. Immediately, sir. I expect it will take at most one day to arrive. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Know what? Changed my mind. Not in the mood to talk about redecoration today. But I wanted to ask you something else. I shall be glad to answer your every question, sir. Starting to really like this place. I agree. Yet... Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon.
my! A witch feller! 